Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being with us bright and early and on this cold, wintry day in the heartland of Illinois and here at the University of Illinois in the research park. We're really thrilled to be with our partners here at the University of Illinois from industry, students that we've seen coming in to the event, Parkland College, startup companies from around different Midwest universities that have gathered here today. It's a great group and we hope you make new friends, new introductions for business purposes and new opportunities that hopefully inspire innovation in whatever it is that you're doing, research or for industry purposes. I'm Laura Frerichs, I'm the director of the research park and it's our real privilege to have the fourth annual Ag Tech Innovation Summit here at the University of Illinois. We hope you talk about what we're doing and so if you tweet or use social media, please try hashtag AgTech19 to be able to promote and follow the conversation today. This event will be recorded in its entirety as you see in the back of the room. That won't be available live, but after the event, if you wanna see some of the talks, they will be available as they have been for past events. So if you're curious of some of the other speakers that we've had as part of this event over the course of four years, please check it out online. And that's at researchpark.illinois.edu. We would not be able to do this event, especially make it a free event, without the generosity of our sponsors. So I'd like to thank our corporate sponsors today. First, our platinum sponsor, Bayer Crop Sciences and the Climate Corporation. And if we can just give each of them an applause after I read them. So thank you to Bayer Crop Sciences and Climate Corp. Our gold sponsor today and sponsoring lunch is ADM. Thank you, ADM, for your generous support and participation in today's program. Our silver sponsor is John Deere, and John Deere will be giving the keynote address for this morning as well. So thank you, John Deere. And our bronze sponsor is Country Financial Digital Lab. And they're out with a table today if there are students interested in hearing about internships there or at other locations that will be promoting their respective roles. So thank you, Country Financial. I'd also like to thank our partners making this event possible, in particular, the College of ACES. I'm sorry that Dean Kidwell could not be here today as she's traveling, but I'd like to thank her team, Ryan Tate and Pedro Fernandez de la Costa, for helping to put this event together with us. I'd like to thank the Office of Corporate Relations at the University of Illinois, in particular Roger Van Hoy and the support of Pradeep Khanna in making this event possible. And I'd like to thank the Technology Entrepreneur Center and the National Science Foundation Midwest i teams that are here today. Thank you to Judd Taylor, Harley Sorkin, Howard Gerwin that helped to organize these teams, 19 teams here this week to try to learn more about startup activity and engage with all of you that are in industry. So if you have a chance today, please be welcoming of those who are thinking about a new business idea or trying to take their research and commercialize it. They really want your feedback to hear from you that are the users, whether you're growers or whether you're in producing um, in the livestock industry or other opportunities that you might see for agriculture's future. We also would like to thank everybody who will be speaking, from the moderators to the speakers. We were overwhelmed with interest of really great people to share their stories. And so thanks for everybody who helped to put that together. If you're a student and you're interested in jobs, please talk to employers here, but I'd also like to direct you to next week where we will have our Research Park Annual, Research Park Career Fair, sorry. And it'll be right here in this room. It's a packed event and there'll be all kinds of companies talking about how you can get involved and work in the research park and these incredible opportunities. But today I'm highlighting ag tech companies. And so we'd like to share a little bit of some of the successes that have happened in the last year right here in our research park community amongst the ag tech industry. One that I'm especially excited to share today will be a fireside chat with the Agribowl uh, people behind the deal. And there are a lot of people, I'll say, but two will be speaking today about their respective experiences, Dave and Dennis, about the acquisition that happened by Nutrien this past July. For $63 million, this was an incredible opportunity to showcase what it's like to start a company here in Champaign, to grow it in the research park, and to get to that successful exit that many aspire to achieve. They also received awards and recognition for their sustainability and leadership in consumer packaged goods, 
and the real partnerships that they formed that you'll hear a bit more about today. Some of the startup activity that is more early stage included companies like Air Scout, which has been working on precision agriculture and recognized globally, including in the UK and Farmers Weekly. Aptimune, a graduate of our incubator that has gone on to continue after speaking at this event to grow their business and work on swine vaccines that are reducing by 50% mortality from PERS that is affecting the swine livestock industry. EarthSense, recognized last year for the More Innovation Prize, went on to lots of fanfare in the past year. They were successful farmers 2019 ag tech startups worth watching, ag funders 12 ag tech startups to watch named in November. Hello Tomorrow just recognized them as one of their finalists. Among, amongst 4,500 applicants to receive such a recognition, they're one of seven finalists. They'll be heading to Paris, France to talk about their role in food, agriculture, and environment. Granular, which announced it was opening just four years ago here at the Research Park, is now one of our largest employers and expanded into a beautiful new office across the street. They were able to successfully grow this office at the same speed that they were growing Silicon Valley. As a tech company, this was especially important to us, and you heard more about that last year. But now they're going on to expand their software in Brazil, Canada, and Australia as they add additional countries going into 2020 as well. Intellinair, another precision agriculture software company that works in the Enterprise Works Incubator, has been growing steadily over the last year. And that's made possible by the types of industry partnerships that they've achieved with Growmark, John Deere, DTN, Climate, Fieldview, and others. So thank you for those that work with startup companies so that they can have those recognizable partnerships. Telltale Ag, we'll be talking about more later today, participated in the National i program that sees opportunities to apply IoT into animal facilities. The Agco Acceleration Center, which opened not long ago, continues to achieve new strides with its work with students. And this year, it was exciting to watch their first campus hackathon that highlighted precision agriculture and prominent issues of connectivity and real-time data analytics. They've been working on cool stuff like augmented reality. So if you want to hear more about it, talk to Lena or some of the other partners at Agco Acceleration Center. The John Deere Technology Innovation Center excited us last year as we saw robots wandering around. And I'm sure Mark's going to tell you about that, of why this team is really leading the course of new robotics technology. So we saw it first in mowers, but I think you're going to hear more of what's to come. The company overall has also made a commitment to work with startup companies as they announced their startup collaborator program in the last year. At Syngenta, they grew their office last year, doubling in size, as Brandon has been leading a new effort to really focus on customer discovery and being a leader in user-centered design experiences to think about digital solutions based on grower and uh, customer demands and interests. The Bayer Crop Science Innovation Center not only opened about a year ago, but then contributed to our community with something innovative. They planted a pollinator garden here in the research park. So as spring hopefully please arrives soon, and we'll start seeing butterflies again. At Enterprise Works, the incubator of the research park, we want to continue to add capacity to support this environment. And Chris Harbert in the back, if you wave, is our newest. He was one of the co-founders of Agrable. Now he's involved with several startup companies and he's sharing his expertise as an entrepreneur in residence. So you can sign up for Chris's time if you want to hear more about how to run a successful new startup company. We're working on lots of new ag tech initiatives with partners that are in this room. And so thank you for all of us that are working together as a regional strategy in ag tech. One of the things that excites us is the upcoming Farm Progress Show, which will be here in Decatur um, in Illinois this year. And we're working with Precision Ag on an event that will occur here at the iHotel right before that event on Monday before Farm Progress Show. So we invite you to participate in that event. We're also excited that there's been academic strides in new programs. And one that will be featured on a panel today is the new Digital Center for Agriculture, which is a combination of the NCSA, the College of Engineering, and the College of Agriculture, thinking about digital strategies and high-performance computing that will en enable the modernization of agriculture. One of those partners that I just mentioned is the College of Agriculture. 
and that's the College of ACES here at the University of Illinois that's been making tremendous leaps and bounds strides of modernization and thinking about the digital future. So it's my pleasure to transition now to Adam Davis from the College of ACES, who is a professor and head of the University of Illinois Department of Crop Sciences. His research includes experimental modeling approaches to solve weed ecology problems in field crop production. He has a very prestigious academic background that you can read about of multiple institutions from Yale to Brown to University of Maine to uh, Iowa State and finally um, arriving here at the University of Illinois after running a program at the USDA. We're really privileged to have a very progressive and very forward-thinking crop sciences department so please join me in welcoming Adam Davis. Thank you. Good morning, and thanks for being here. Uh, so as department head for crop sciences, I'll be representing the College of ACES this morning. So the acronym ACES stands for Agricultural, Consumer, and Environmental Sciences. ACES is home to seven academic units and 11 majors with 186 tenure system faculty, 2,700 undergrads, and 750 graduate students. Our units investigate the basic and applied science underlying the production and improvement of plants and animals for food, fiber, fuel, and feed. They invent and refine production technologies to make agriculture more efficient and profitable. And they find new uses for Illinois' bountiful harvests while improving food security and quality. Human dimensions of agriculture and the environment are represented through research into family, child, and societal health, as well as the function of our economic, social, legal, and political systems. And while doing all of this, our units assess and protect the health of our natural resources and environment. Technologies have changed and continue to change how we think about what's possible. Central Illinois, which boasts some of the world's most fertile soils, was originally passed over during early westward migration and settlement. And this was because the prevailing theory of soil fertility at the time in the 18th and early 19th centuries linked soil fertility to the height of the dominant vegetation. And Illinois having prairie vegetation, they actually passed through and went out west to find the tall trees. The prairie was seen as an area to be avoided for reasons of low fertility as well as the difficulty of breaking prairie sods. That changed with John Deere's invention of the metal moldboard plow in 1837, and that enabled a radical rethink of what was possible in prairie soils and prepared the way for supporting the settlement of the heartland by coupling the rapid technological advances of the Industrial Revolution with discovery science and agricultural production. These rapid feedbacks between science, technology, and changing societal needs during the westward expansion of the U.S. highlighted the urgent need for centers of innovation and education. The Morrill Act of 1862, signed by President Lincoln, resulted in the founding of 37 land-grant universities, including the University of Illinois, in 1868. The College of ACES continues to perform all these functions today in a new social, environmental and technological context. The tagline of this conference is where industry and investors meet entrepreneurs. I would suggest that public-private partnerships will also help prioritize resources for innovation and training and to accelerate discoveries. Units in the College of ACES provide value to such partnerships by taking risks through discovery science in areas that are just emerging. Much of our agricultural research in ACES is stakeholder driven, growing out of ongoing partnerships and relationships that identify priority areas for investing resources. We consider raw data through our disciplinary lens and turn it into impartial knowledge that makes people's lives better. The rise of digital agriculture is a response 
to the increasing complexity of agricultural decision making, coupled with the maturity of many technologies. To build capacity in this area, crop sciences began a pioneering joint degree in computer sciences and crop sciences in fall 2018. At the campus level, ACES has partnered with our superb College of Engineering to form the Center for Digital Agriculture, which brings the breadth and depth of scientific knowledge and research capacity from our units to bear on grand challenges in agriculture. Today, I'd like to share with you an example of how public-private partnerships will help us to prepare students to be valuable thought leaders in the ag tech innovation space of the 21st century. In fall 2018, Crop Sciences enrolled its first students in our new major, Crop Sciences plus Computer Sciences, and our goal for these students is that they gain a synthetic working knowledge of both disciplines, helping them to identify and anticipate fruitful areas for technological innovation in crop production. The Climate Corporation, a division of Bayer, has pledged a $500,000 gift over five years towards fellowship supports of students in our CS plus Crop Sciences program. Each student will receive $10,000 towards their education as they advance in their studies at UI. Gifts such as this not only help make sure that all students can afford to participate in cutting edge programs, but send a strong signal that Bayer believes in these students' future. Please help me thank them for their support and vision. I'll now turn the podium over to our platinum sponsor highlight portion of the program, Bayer and the Climate Corporation. Thank you for your attention and for participating in the Ag Tech Innovation Summit. Thank you. Thank you, Adam and Laura, uh, for, the, for the kind opening, and definitely appreciate all the work um, that's gone into pulling together, uh, together an event such as this. And so before I get into um, corporate mission statements and things like that, um, maybe just reflect back. So I'm, a, I'm an alum from the university, spent a lot of time wandering around Morrill Hall, Turner Hall, arguing with Don Bullock about the Cubs Cardinals, um, you know, coming up. And increasingly, um, you know, we, we have a number of folks within our company who have that sort of path. But increasingly, we have folks who spent their time in the mechanical engineering lab or um, the Granger Library, right? And as, as Adam mentioned, what, what we aim to do is, is support bringing those two um, different disciplines together um, in ways that can help us transform um, agriculture. And so, I'm here today to, to represent both uh, Bayer Crop Science as well as the Climate Corporation. Um, at Bayer Crop Science, our mission is science for a better life. And we feel that agriculture is a place where innovation will continue to transform agriculture from you know, the invention of the moldboard plow to a digital agriculture future um, that we look to build in partnership with, with institutions such as the University of Illinois. Um, Bayer Crop Sciences has uh, more than 35 research uh, uh, locations globally and over 175 breeding sites globally. Um, uh, and, and with that work, we aim to, to transform not just production agriculture, but um, consumer understanding of that modern agricultural practice as well. The Climate Corporation's mission is to help all the world's farmers um, sustainably increase productivity through digital tools. And uh, it's super exciting to be a part of this. I don't know a lot about computer science and crop science, uh, but I've got a lot of really smart colleagues who do. And it's really interesting to learn from them and, and better understand how we can bring these two areas together and provide um, tools that farmers need. Um, they may not know that they need them, and part of this is getting them to understand why they need them and what the real value is in them. Uh, but really taking that sort of to the next level of, of providing insights that can, that can help growers um, you know, become more uh, profitable, more productive, and more sustainable um, as entities. As Laura mentioned, uh, we've, we're just over a year into having the Bayer Crop Sciences Innovation Center just across the, the driveway over here, um, and, and have been excited to, to 
integrate more with the university to, to help train students on real world problems um, that we see within, within the industry. And so to close, um, the partnerships that we have with institutions such as this are critical. Um, we thank everyone for their time and effort uh, into, into thinking about how we can make a more sustainable agricultural future. Uh, we look forward to an exciting day and exciting conversations, and thanks for the opportunity.